Good morning, Floss Tube. It is a very dull, I'm looking outside and it's kind of, yeah, drizzly and raining, but it is a very dull Friday, the 25th of June, 2021, here in Northern Ireland. And this is my Floss Tube episode four. Thank you for joining me. If you have just found me this morning, this is a Floss Tube about cross stitch, about embroidery, quilting, and any other needle craft that takes my fancy in a given period of time. <laughs> um, if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for wanting to spend some more time and I hope that you're able to stitch along or do something nice while you're listening this morning. It's great to be back. Um, since the last time I have been uh, actually quite busy um, socially, which is, it's not actually like me in normal circumstances, <laughs> but it's very unlike me um, given the last year and a half and all of our COVID restrictions. So yeah, there's been quite a few things happening in the last fortnight since um, since I was last here. There was an event at school, which is the very first of its um, a very first event at school this year. Um, it was a retirement uh, party for the principal and it was all COVID secure and outdoors and the weather held for us, which was really nice. And um, it was it was nice to see Charlotte um, enjoying her evening at her very first school social event and having a big party at school. Um, um, Charlotte does love a party. So we also had um, a Father's Day party. Um, Everything is a party. Everything that you invite anyone else to with food is a party in Charlotte's eyes. <laughs> so we had a Father's Day brunch, um, obviously invited my dad and my hubby's dad and his mum. And we enjoyed some lovely breakfast and, um, and some cake afterwards. So that was a nice celebration this past Sunday. I think it's been Father's Day in other parts of the world too. Um, so I hope that those of you who were able to celebrate did and um, that those of you who maybe aren't able to celebrate um, have fond memories in your hearts and were able to enjoy um, the memories of your fathers. Um, we have, oh yes, last night I was out, like out, out, which is really exciting. <laughs> and I'm a little bit hoarse as a result this morning, so you'll have to excuse me if I um, need some water to lubricate <laughs> this morning. Um, we were out to celebrate my best friend's very special birthday, and it was lovely. There were six of us, because we're not allowed to go out in a group of six and um, we went to a lovely restaurant, but it was really noisy. So we were kind of increasing our volume to talk and be heard uh, all night long. So I feel a little bit talked out this morning um, and <laughs> a little bit scratchy in my throat. But it was a great evening and it was um, such a fabulous celebration. So that was really nice to see um, some friends again I haven't seen for a long time um, and to celebrate Judith's um, it's a very special day. Um, I have also posted a second Floss Tube Extra video, so if you haven't seen that, you might be interested in going to have a little look. That is a little tutorial on wrapping a, an embroidery hoop with fabric, so it's a wrapped hoop tutorial. The day that I videoed that, my iPad decided it was full, <laughs> and I didn't quite get um, a, a full you know, a, a tidy finish on the end of the tutorial. It is all there, but I did want to add to it that, that of course, you know, as creative people, there are many different ways that, that you can wrap uh, an embroidery hoop um, to display your work. So you can use a little bit of, a little touch of um, white PVC, uh, PVC, let's start again. White PVA glue, like Elmer's glue or just generic PD, PVA glue. Um, and just a little bit around the edge of the hoop and, and just run the lace around the edge, not wrapping, but just pressing it on around the edge. Makes a nice finish too. I've seen washi tape. In fact, one of the um, Cotton and Twine subscription boxes that I've received recently has provided a hoop and washi tape to finish off with. Um, you can, uh, if, you, if you can crochet, you can add a nice little crochet trim to a hoop. So there are lots and lots of options and I didn't get to say that in the Floss Tube Extra and I just didn't have time to go back um, and fix that up. 
But um, but if you have watched it, I hope that it might encourage you to have a go um, to frame some of your smaller pieces or your gift pieces. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. So go and check that out. This morning, I wanted to shout out a couple of other floss tubers that I watch from time to time and think that you might enjoy um, taking a peek at. The first one is Sarah at The Clumsy Stitcher. She's um, a UK stitcher. She's young and enthusiastic and she has a lovely calm voice and measured tones. And I love to watch her projects. She's, um, she's got some big dimensions projects on the go and um, I think she might have started a head as well. Um, yeah, and she has, um, yeah, she's just really nice to listen to. Haven't seen her post for a little while, but I do know that she's getting married this summer and I imagine she's just in the, the middle of all of that organization. So I don't think she watches either, but Sarah, if you ever are watching this, I hope that you have a great wedding day. I hope that it's a great start to being Mr. and Mrs. And I wish you every blessing for the future head and I hope you'll be back very soon with some more uh, video posts for us to see. So go on and see Sarah uh, and see the work that she's done so far. Then I've been watching Stitch Again Sam. Sam is from the US and she has returned to stitching and is finding her path um, and trying to make rules and break them at the same time about having projects how many projects and categorizing her projects and not having too many on the go at once, but then creating new categories so that she can have another project. So I love that. I love, <laughs> I love that she's really just like the rest of us um, and is trying to find a balance between having lots of projects and, um, and staying sane. <laughs> but um, yeah, go and watch Sam. Um, she is um, a very nice watch as well. And then also uh, you should go and see Jenny Stitching Simply. Jenny has a few videos out and I would recommend that you go back and just watch from the beginning to see how Jenny's journey into Floss Tube began. I don't want to spoil the story, um, but it's a nice story. And um, Jenny, has, uh, Jenny has been showing her projects, which are beautiful. And Jenny has a, a a simple stitching ethos. Excuse me, just a moment. Told you I was hoarse. Well, that little coughing of a bit brought tears to my eyes. Sorry about that interlude. Anyway, go and watch Jenny. She has um, a simplicity ethos, really. So unlike most of us who are coming down with um, whips and fabric and stash and everything else, Jenny has, she has plenty, but she has a very nice ethos of simplicity and um, it's really calming to watch her. And I really enjoy it. And you will enjoy um, her editing help in the form of her son, Roman, who is a very talented and comedic editor. And that's all I will say because it's really worth a watch. So go and see Sarah and Sam and Jenny. I will put the links to the names or the links um, to all of them down below in my show notes so that you can follow that up. So let me show you what stitching I've been up to in the last couple of weeks. I have been working again on my daily thread project, which as you know, if you've been here before, is the Be Happy Needlepoint Tapestry. You can see that I have managed to fill in everything on this section now. So right over to about here, it's completely filled in. This flower needs to be filled in and this bee, I think there's a little bit in this, yeah, the black has to go into this bee as well. But you can see that it's really coming along and I have moved some of the white background across as well so it's beginning to feel like there is an end in sight and that's just my daily thread is the project that I put one thread in each day that I stitch so before I stitch anything else I'll put one thread into this and um, that just keeps it on the go really it's not speedy but it does make progress it's amazing that 
you know, over the course of a month, how much you can actually achieve. So I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying seeing it um, getting blocked off into little sections that just need to be finished now. I think maybe for July that I will leave this aside though and make something else my um, daily thread project just because I've got a lot on in July um, and there's no big hurry on this one so it will come back um, maybe hopefully in August uh, September time um, I'll bring it back as my daily thread and be able to keep working on it but I've really really enjoyed it and again I'll add the details of all the projects that I show today down below in the show notes. This is Be Happy Needlepoint Tapestry from the Historical Sampler Company, which is a UK company, but um, they do ship um, worldwide. So, and it was a kit. So you get everything, you get the canvas, you get all of the wool, woolen, um, I think it's anchor wool, and you get a chart as well. So you could cross stitch from that um, also. And in previous, in my previous episodes, I did link to um, a cross stitch version. There is a cross stitch version of this. So if you like the design, but maybe you don't want to work with the wool or in the needlepoint tapestry, um, then you can go and have a look and just pick up the um, cross stitch, which comes, I think, as just a pattern or as a kit as well. So there we go. So that was good progress on that. I was quite happy that that's um, making little steps towards finish. Then I did another another project that I want to work on a little bit. So I'm trying, if you remember, this is my peppermint purple. Let me show you this first. Peppermint purple black work pattern and it's called the Rainbow Cross Quilt. And I am wanting to, to achieve roughly one section a week just to be able to keep this one rolling along. And I think that I managed these two, which are the last of the greens, the light. I'm trying to see the light isn't great this morning. I've had to put the overhead lights on because it's so dull outside. But anyway, hopefully you can see that there are different shades of greens there at that bottom corner and then we're going to move into the blues and the purples and come back around into pinks um, but that will be a long way away I'm just warning you <laughs> but hopefully hopefully I might be able to keep up with one section um, one section a week a um, couple of section a month would would still be making progress so I quite enjoy having these ones on the go that there's no pressure on or or, or but it just keeps them ticking over and I really do enjoy them. So if you are interested in black work, um, let me see if I can show you a little bit closer up some of these designs. They're really pretty. So if you are interested in black work, I would recommend that you check out peppermintpurple.co.uk. <clears throat> she has lots of different uh, types and styles. So some of them are just geometric designs like this one um, she has some that are shaped black work but shaped so maybe um, books but they're filled in with black work or teacups but they're filled in with black work um, yeah there's lots and lots to look at so if you are interested or interested in giving it a go I think she might also have a few freebies like heart that's filled in so you could always try the freebie to see how you like the project um, I think sometimes freebies are always a good way to start um, and generally speaking if I if I do one of the free projects that a designer has offered and like it I will end up back purchasing from that designer so it is you know it's an effective marketing tool from the designers and um, and the freebies are there for you to use so go and have a look um, so that's peppermint purple <clears throat> And then I worked on the Modern Folk Embroidery Home Sweet Home, which you've seen a number of times now. I hope you're not bored seeing it. But this is from Jacob at Modern Folk Embroidery. It's called Home Sweet Home. I love it. I love the house. And 
this one will be for a gift and I'm stitching it on 32 count Platinum Murano from Swigart. I've left enough for three inch borders all around because I'm not sure how I'm going to finish it yet. Um, and the thread that I'm using is Gentle Art 0892 Loganberry, which is sort of mauve purple, probably not showing up terribly well on this. But you can see that since last time I have completed this shrub in the pot started the tree and finished the house is it i just think that is the most beautiful house it's like victorian brickwork or that's what it reminds me of i think it's amazing sorry i'm wobbling a little bit and then at the top it says anno meaning year obviously 2021 so that means i have to finish it this year I'm not normally as brave and put the year in early <laughs> in my projects, but it is for a gift. So I really am trying to uh, keep keep momentum on this one and um, and get it done. So there is a, a border. There is another border down below um, with <coughs> the alphabet in. You can see down below that to do as well once I've completed the trees and the shrubs up above and the numbers as well. So I'm pleased that was, it was a lot of work um, that went into the house, but I enjoyed it. I really love the roof, which is very simple, but very effective. And I think the variegated thread uh, works really well for the windows actually. It kind of makes it look like light and shadows um, in the windows in different places. So. so that is my progress with Home Sweet Home. Sorry, I'm having a collapse over here. There we go. <clears throat> and then I had I made a small start on Hello Pumpkin. And my needle has just flown off the needle minder. That's what I'm looking for. I just saw it fly off as I it was it's to do with the way I lifted it. Anyway, here we go with Hello Pumpkin. I'm not working on these probably as quickly as I'd like, but um but I have to say, those pumpkins, that was such a satisfying shape to stitch. <laughs> I don't know what it was about about it, um, the different colours, but putting them in um, to the fabric, it was a really satisfying um, shape to stitch. So you can see that, um, well, I should have put this on the board, but this is where the tree will start to come up here whenever I get next get to that. So. And that little aisle is the needle minder um, that came with the project when it was first released as a sew along, a stitch along. And that is also from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. So let me just rescue my board so I can show you the next project on the board. That's Hello Pumpkin. And then, as you know, I do Whip Go. And one of the numbers that was called for Whitgo in June. It was another new start for me. So I'd finished, last time I showed you that I'd finished the Valentine Bakery by the Stitching with the Housewives. It was only small, so I did it from start to finish in my Whitgo goal. Um, my next Whitgo call was for this project, which is by Country Cottage Needleworks. And it's called Love Lives Here. Um, I bought this in January, February time. Um, obviously it had a kind of Valentine's-y feel to it. And in January, February time this year, I was really just starting to purchase a little bit, a bit more. Um, I had, was well and truly in the rabbit hole and was starting to make decisions about what I wanted to stitch. And I was, um, yeah, I was getting busy online, <laughs> online ordering. So this was one of those projects. I added it to my WIPGO board then when I started WIPGO in February. I, I started a month late for WIPGO and it got called this month. So it is a new start and <clears throat> um, I hope you're gonna be able to see it. It's on a scroll frame. And, but it's one of those scroll frames that you, you tack your piece onto the, the webbing. So I'm not going to take it off. <laughs> 
until it's done. But you can see that I've made a start on the border work um, all the way across. So. The pink and white checkered border um, is a good one to do when you're a little bit distracted, like watching television or watching a movie because it's just three by three squares. So it's easy not to lose count, unlike the green vine, which has been unpicked in several places on several occasions. <laughs> so, um, but I, I'm happy with that. That is my WIPCO goal met. My, for WIPCO, my goals is to put in 10 hours on the project that it's called. So that was 10 hours of work from beginning to end. I, I don't think that I'm a particularly speedy stitcher, in fact, I think I'm quite a slow stitcher. I just happen to have a lot of time at the moment because I'm on furlough from work. Um, so don't think that I do all of this at night. And um, you know, it's not that I, I make use of other parts of the day when I'm not busy with my little miss. Um, and that is more stitching time than I've ever really had before in my, in my life. So um, I know some people have said to me, oh, you've, you're doing so much or you're so fast. I'm not fast, I just have extra hours which are probably going to stop now that school's about to get out. <laughs> but um, but that's okay. I will go back and I will do whatever I can and just keep enjoying what stitches are possible. So that is Love Lives Here. As I said, um, I ordered that at the beginning of the year. I was um, I had been watching YouTube uh, and Flosstube up to the end of the year. And really at the beginning of the year, I started to think, oh yeah, I'd like to buy a few more projects. And then... Of course, a few becomes a few more and a few more and a few more. And as you watch Flosstube, I don't know about you, but I end up getting trapped in fear of missing out and thinking, oh, if I don't buy that now, it won't be there. Or, oh, I want to join that stitch along or I want to join this or I want to do that. Or somebody shows a dobo with lots of pillows in it and I want to have a dobo or a tiered tray or... So yes, I have really <laughs> fallen foul of uh, FOMO. And yes, I'm gonna show you my tiered tray. So not to miss out, I wanted to be sure that I would have a tiered tray. So here's my tiered tray and, and all its projects, okay? Go, so it's a tiered tray. As you can see, we have candles. I did not make the candles, so they are not my project. We have more candles on the top. Where is the cross stitch, Sarah? No cross stitch, not yet. The candles are there so that my husband doesn't say, what's that thing for in the middle of the table? <clears throat> my mother-in-law is watching this. Hello, Sandra. So Sandra, you're not allowed to tell him <laughs> that the candles are there just until I can get round to finishing the cross stitch that's meant to go on, <laughs> that's meant to go on it. So this is a tear tray is from Ikea, if you are interested. It's just a little two tiers. Um, one day there will be finishes on there. And then this is my dobo. Clearly it's not a dobo. I don't know that dobos are a thing here um, in Northern Ireland. I've seen a few on eBay, but they're really super expensive. Um, and I think they might be coming from the States. So, um, it's not really a it's not really a thing I've seen much of, much of here. So <clears throat> I was looking for an alternative. What little tray alternative could I have to display some smalls in when I finally get around to making them? And um, in IKEA when I was buying my tiered tray, I found this. Now this is a it's actually a candle tray. So that's what it was. That's what it was labeled as on the shelf, and it was in the candle section. So if you if you like it and fancy having a look for one yourself, that's where you'll find it in the where the candles are. I liked it because it has the birds and the vines and the, the leaves and things. So, And I thought it would be perfect for putting in a little um, cross stitch vignette. That's the hope anyway. As you can see, <laughs> there's nothing in that yet either. But the point of me showing you these is to show you that I get caught up as much as anyone else in what's going on in this world. And I did buy um, some 
projects like the Love Lives Here, although it'll probably be a framed one. But around that time, I bought some other Valentine's um, style patterns I'm going to show you now. So these are not things I've stitched in the last two weeks, but they are things that, that are finished stitching. They just need to be fully finished. And my plan is to create little pillows or, um, or stand-ups or something when the time comes to um, fully finish these and get them in that display. So there's still time before next Val <laughs> Valentine's Day uh, to do something with these. So I thought you might like to see them. Um, so the first is Stitches from the Heart, which is um, a pattern that was um, put out in January, February time by the Fat Quarter Shop. It was free and still is free and I will link it below. Excuse me, that was a message on my phone, obviously. So I will put it, add the link below um, and it's still there. Um, I checked it yesterday. So it, it's still on their site and it's a free pattern um, for this lovely heart. Um, pretty, uh, pretty intense coverage on it. Actually, it was a bigger, um, a bigger job than I thought it was going to be, but it's nice. And I just stitched this on a, I think it's a 16 count. <clears throat> uh, yes, a 16 count Ada, like a Rustico Ada that was just in my stash. I had a, I had a pile of Ada from my previous stitching days <clears throat> that came, I think, in a selection pack. So I was using bits and pieces up. So this is 16 count Rustico Ada. Um, and I just chose eight different red and pink threads from my stash. Uh, they're not DMC, so I haven't got any numbers. It was, again, it was one of those big multi-packs that you get. I think I joined a club, like a, um, a mailing club years ago. Um, and the freebie gift was this pack of Ada, mixed Ada and a, and a pack of, um, flosses but they were non-branded so um they're not as nice as ada um but they they've finished the job so that's stitches from the heart by the fat quarter shop and then i fell in love with another one of the stitching with the housewives releases um, and this one is called the be mine ornament there is another be mine uh, design that they have which is a little bit bigger and is also gorgeous but I didn't I didn't purchase it at the time and um, it's on my list <laughs> maybe for another time uh, but this one is the be mine ornament I changed the colors uh, so just to whatever I had in my stash so the I changed from black to dark brown and um, I think the rose is more red in their original pattern and that kind of thing. But I just, I was using what I had at, at that stage um, as sort of my own conversion. Um, they are DMCs this time, but um, they're just not the, what was called for, for the, the DMC alternative that was listed on the pattern. So I still have a little bit to learn about thread conversion, I'm not sure that it's exactly successful uh, in some of my choices, but I still love it. This Ada was also in the pack and um, it's not showing up very well here today, but it is a tiny, tiny bit pink. It's very, that's maybe slightly better. Yeah. So I also got caught up <laughs> in having a go at dyeing one day. But I just watched something and suddenly thought, oh, I'd like to dye that. I don't want to stitch that on uh, on white. I'd like to stitch it on something pink. I don't have anything pink. So I got a jar, <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell, a jar of beetroot. In the UK, we have a Baxter's beetroot in pickled vinegar. And I used the juice from the jar of beetroot, beetroot and I soaked my Ada in it. And it worked. I was a wee bit afraid to leave it in for too long, but it did work. It has got a very slight pink tinge. I was too nervous to let it go more pink just in case. Um, but yeah, I'm probably not really recommending that you use <laughs> the beetroot pickled vinegar um, to dye your Ada, but uh, I'm quite sure you could use real beets when you're cooking them. 
um, if, if you want to. But anyway, I was just being impatient and um, very spontaneous that particular day <laughs> and used the beetroot to dye the end. And I'm very happy. It has a very soft pink. And again, I hope that will become um, a little pillow to finally have something <laughs> to display in my tear tray and dough bowl. Then I have another freebie that you might like. <clears throat> Again, hoping for another pillow. This is my first ever attempt at stitching one over one. And it's a 25 count mystery linen. I think it actually has come from um, a kit. I remember that I was stitching some cottages years and years and years ago. Um, stitching some cottages and there was a trio of cottages so there were three pieces of linen provided in the kit and I stitched two of them and didn't stitch the third but I kept the linen so I think this is it I have no idea really what it is but it did I did count it and it is 25 count um it's maybe it's an even weave or a linen it looks like it looks like it does have a few slubs in it so I think it's probably a linen anyway the pattern the design is a free design on the Primitive Hair website. Um, obviously it says Valentine. Um, I will have a link to that below. As I said, it's the first time I stitched one over one. I thought I would give it a go on something really small. I stitched with DMC 347, which I believe is Laurie Holt's favorite red. Um, and it certainly worked very nicely for this piece. So. I'm looking forward to finishing that in a in a simple pillow too. I think hopefully in the autumn winter time I will um pluck up the courage. I don't know why I'm so afraid to actually finish them. Um because I make little pillows all the time, but for some reason with the cross stitch I'm more nervous about actually giving it a go. But I think maybe I'll have a, a finishing weekend or something. Um later on in the autumn and and get some of these done and hopefully then not leave things just for quite so long <clears throat> again and the last one that i wanted to show you today so i have four of these sort of valentine's pieces all together the last one i wanted to show you is a 2020 collector's heart by heart in hand now when i when i bought this it came with the fabric and with this little button and these beads so the thread choices are mine. Um, I stitched them um, with DMC, not the called for or recommended DMC that's on the pattern. Um, I don't normally stitch on quite such a mottled fabric, but I think it's it's working really nicely for this. I enjoyed this. The red that I used is, it's all one red. Um, it looks like maybe there's more than one, but it's just the way the variegation has worked. So it's red, DMC 115. And then I also used DMC 712 and 842. There's, there's this color and then there's a creamy color occasionally. So one of those is 712 and one is 842. Some of you more experienced stitchers will know which is which, but I can't offhand remember. So those are my four hope to be smalls. Um, Valentine smalls to actually pop in the dough bowl. Next year, I hope. There you go. So, kind of previous finishes just to share since I don't have any actual finishes myself today. <clears throat> there we go. So the fear of missing out, um, yes, I get that bug as well. I want to join the stitch alongs. I want to be in cross stitch camp. And then I have to stop and I have to say, no, you can't do everything. So, um, so, but I think what I think is really great is that we have all this choice now um, and it's there for us to enjoy. And, um, and I think if you're not enjoying it, then you don't do it. So if, if it suits you better to be a one project at a time person, be that person and enjoy your stitching. Don't ever do anything that makes your stitching miserable. It's supposed to be good fun. It's supposed to bring you pleasure and enjoyment. 
Um, so if it's not, leave it aside for a time and do something that is fun. Um, and stitch alongs are great fun <laughs> and joining in with the community is great fun. Um, I have to say that um, the stitch along for La um, Finestra del Tempo is still very much on my radar for the 1st of August start and I am so happy that so many of you want to join me. Um, and we have a nice little number and I'm hoping that the Instagram group will be busy when the time comes. The hashtag is Finestra del Tempo so you are all invited to come along and join in with us. Uh, and we're stitching one month per month of the time windows because this little calendar windows. So it's one month per month. We're starting with August. If you want to start with a different month, feel free, go ahead. You don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it. Um, sorry, we're not starting with August. What am I talking about? Rewind. We are starting in August with the January stitch, okay? So, but if you want to stitch a different month, then go ahead. If we're in August and you want to stitch August, please do that. Please do whatever makes you happy. Just join the stitch along, share your photographs, get to know people in the group um, and just have fun. Um, so it's lovely that so many of you will be joining me and I won't be stitching alone. And I am really looking forward to that. I have been preparing. So these are the, obviously these are the patterns for the months January to April and May to August. September to December are coming. Um, I'm imagining that they'll come sometime later in this summer. I am going to stitch on a 32 count silver grey Murano um, from Swigart and I have cut and zigzag edged my pieces so that they're ready for each month and I have cut all 12 of those I was in a, a preparation frenzy <laughs> so I think it took um I had two pr fat quarter pre-cut packages of this uh, Murano and I needed them both I, I couldn't get everything out of one fat quarter so if you are going to do it on a 32 count and you want to do them individually like this with um um, so a bit of a border and um, you may need a, a couple of fat quarters or a half a fat half to be able to get that out but you'll be able to work work all of that out from the stitch count of each of the designs is 55 by 69 so they're not very big and you might want to stitch them all together in a different way or something but anyway I have been preparing the fabric I did show you last week that I'm gathering the threads too and um I'm really looking forward to getting some stitches in on that January pattern and getting um, my Finestra del Tempo started. So again, I will pop all of the details below. If you want to know more about the um, stitch along, please ask or go back and view my previous videos or pop onto my Instagram because all of the information is there um, and the hashtag and um, and what the plan is it's it's all there but ask away if, if you are interested and there's also a link to Marula's Etsy shop Marula is Crosetta Gogo that's her shop name on Etsy and you can download the patterns there so joining in with all that's going on in the community <coughs> um, means that of course I'm going to do Jolly July or Christmas in July or whichever way you call it. I have followed the back quarter shop last year um, so I'm used to calling it Jolly July um, after Kimberly Jolly. So I've got lots of Christmas patterns and I had to spend some time thinking about which ones I really want to make a start on in July. Given that I have um, other things that I want to continue with like Home Sweet Home and Hello Pumpkin and the Black Work Rainbow. Um, yeah, I want to keep I want to keep at those next uh, next month as well. So it won't be entirely just purely Christmas stitching. So I made some choices um, from my Christmas pattern stash. And here is what I am going to stitch for Jolly July. <clears throat> First of all, I have chosen this Little Dove's Designs Christmas Wishes. So, 
I was able to download this, download this PDF um, from the Little Dove Designs website, or it might be an Etsy shop. Um, I was able to download that and I've been able to gather all the threads. I'm going, to, I think it calls for DMC, so that, and that's what I'm stitching in. Yes, it's all called for DMC. Um, and I've got another piece of that. Let me get the board again so that it's not shining through. I've got another piece of the Rustico. This time it's an 18 count, Ada. But it's that Rustico. And then these are the DMC cold boards, which I think look really nice um, on here whenever. I think they'll work really well together. Lost that pink in there a bit. But anyway, you can see. So that is Christmas wishes. That's in the plan um, I have a nice little Scandi Christmas it's a Macauer fabric Macauer is a UK fabric brand um, and they have a lovely range of Scandi fabric and um, for the last three or four years they've brought out a different Scandi range every year um, and that's one of them it doesn't I know it could be used for anything it's not just Christmas but that's one of the prints I had left over and made a little bag from a while back so i'll show you again that little dove designs christmas wishes little dove designs do have some other very nice christmas patterns and um, so if if you like this you might like some of their others you could go and have a little look i think also that some of the designs have um just been picked up by fat quarter shop and some of them are available there i'm not sure that this one is but um, I think there might be one called Home for the Holidays or something like that and it's been picked up um, and is available on Fat Quarter Shop too. Then um, I did mention before, of course, I want to do the new Stitching with the Housewives and to all a good night. I think it's fabulous. I think I might make it into a cushion panel, but we'll see. Um, so I, I picked up some Ada. This is a... 14 count Permin Ada in chalkboard black. It's not too dark of a black. It's really more of a deep charcoal gray. That's got quite a long piece because it is a long, it's a long design. So I don't actually have my hands on the pattern yet because I'm waiting for the PDF, which will be released on the 1st of July, but if, like me, you are waiting on the PDF, you can find the dimensions and the colour, the floss colour, pardon me, pardon me, the floss colours and the dimensions on the um, Fat Quarter Shop website um, for the, their paper copy of the pattern. Um, so you can find that information, which is really helpful which means that you can be prepared in advance of the PDF um, coming out. So I have a few of the threads are um, here. It's only, it's, it's only a few of them and they're lovely, lovely colors. But these are just the threads that I had to buy um, that I don't already have in stash or in other projects. So there's a number of other threads. Obviously there'll be um, some greens and aquas and that. I have those in other, already in, in my other project bags. So I'll be able to um, share from, from those. So I'm, I'm all ready to go. I'm just waiting on the PDF excitedly because I really, really want to stitch this one. I think I think it's gonna be a real winner of a pattern for the, the, the Housewives for Priscilla and Chelsea. Um, and yeah, I think it's it's going to be a big popular design for this um, jolly July and for, for stitching this July. The last of my three choices for Christmas projects to start in July is another modern folk embroidery. Um, it's a smaller piece, um, which I'm hoping means I might get it finished a bit quicker. And it's Old Tidings of Comfort and Joy. Isn't that lovely? 
I just love the simplicity of it. I love the text, I love the different fonts, I love that little house, I love the snow. I'm probably not gonna enjoy those stitches, <laughs> those confetti snow stitches, but um, they'll be worth it when, it when my project looks like this. <laughs> so that's Modern Folk Embroidery, downloadable PDF. It's, it's a very inexpensive one as well, sorry. Oh, you see that again probably. I have a piece of 32 count vintage Stormy Night Lugana which is a lovely mottled grey. Let me pop it on the board again. It's a lovely mottled grey which I think will look great with the DMC Blanc. So that's my plans. That's what I'm hoping to make a start on in terms of Christmas projects for Jolly July. Um, I really hope that I can make good headroads into those. Obviously, I'm not looking for any finishes because I've got other months to go forward. But I also have other Christmas projects that I'd really like to get um, to be able to pick out of my stash and kit up and work on um, in, the, in the autumn time as well. So this will be a nice start along with the Home Sweet Home and Hello Pumpkin and the black work and... Home Sweet Home, because it's for a gift, I really want to make progress on that. So I think it will become my daily thread in July, um, with the exception of the time that I'm going away with my friends, my stitchy friends, um, just because it's it's um, too big to carry as it is. Um, and I'll be taking other things with me. So yeah. I will, um, but it will be my daily thread project in July. Um, just to keep it moving. So uh, it's going to be busy. Of course, there's also Whipgo. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Whipgo numbers will be called on the 27th of the month for July. Um, I'm hoping <laughs> that uh, O oh, Tidings of Comfort and Joy comes up because it's on my Whipgo board and maybe uh, something that I've already finished because I have, I think, I've a couple of projects. That haven't been called but that I had worked on and and managed to finish so I suppose I'm hoping for a light whip go month in July um, just so I don't have uh, too much else because I'm not I'm not sure I'm going to get through all of this especially since school's out and I'm going to have a busy little miss around every day to um, keep occupied um, but we'll see you know plans are plans they're not rules they're just plans <laughs> they can adapt and um, and that's all fine I'm quite, uh, quite used to tweaking as I go, <laughs> as I go. So that's really all of the stitching that I have for you today. Um, but before I, I have a little bit of quilting to come, but before I get to that, I want to announce the giveaway winner. So last time I had hit the 1000 subscribers, which was very exciting and um, for which I am very appreciative and I had promised you a giveaway. So this morning before I filmed, I ran the numbers through the random comment picker and there were 147 entries that mentioned the word summer uh, and therefore were eligible for the draw. And the winner is, drum roll please, the winner is Carmen Taylor. So thank you very much for your comment, Carmen. I'm glad that you um, liked the giveaway enough to enter and I will be very happy to get that parceled up and posted off to you um, hopefully sometime next week. If you can make contact with me I have listed my address down below in the show notes it's sewmesara at gmail.com if you want to send me the, um, there. If you're on Instagram, you can direct message me. Just let me have your postal address and I will get that off to you. And of course, you would probably like to be reminded of what it is you've won. I'm sitting here with my arms crossed, just chatting, forgetting <laughs> to show you. So you have the Laurie Holt um, patchwork project bag with the little Christmas tree tag on the zipper pull. And the needle minder that matches the fabrics from the Laurie Holt collection and the homespun elegance snow joyful pattern. So I hope that you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy having a Christmas project always on the go in your little bag and I hope that you're able to stitch this one up. 
Thank you everyone else for uh, entering the giveaway, for participating, for continuing to chat. It's been great. I have been very, very busy with comments <laughs> this last couple of weeks, but um, I love every one of them and um, please continue uh, to keep chatting. So if you're just here for the cross stitch and you want to say goodbye now, this is the time and I'll see you hopefully in another few weeks. Um, and if you want to stay for just a tiny bit of um, my patchwork and, and sewing, um, then I will show you now what I've been up to. So in a previous episode, I let you know that I am stitching from the um, Great Granny Squared book by Laurie Holt, which I've forgotten to get out so I could show you today, but I've shown it before. It's Laurie Holt's book. It's called Great Granny Squared. It's um, a lovely book with a, a lovely pattern. Oh, there's the needle that flew off the needle minder earlier. So let's stop that. And that's not because there's anything wrong with the needle minder. It's because of the way I picked it up and it flicked, by the way. <laughs> Those needle minders are very strong. They don't normally let go. Anyway, back to the quilting. Um, these are the Great Granny Squared blocks that I've been making when my friend comes to stitch, now that we're allowed to um, come into each other's houses again. So she comes to stitch on a Wednesday morning, if she can. She hasn't been for a couple of weeks, but um, we've been making these gorgeous blocks they'll actually sit this way in the in the end quilt so they have to be trimmed oops trimmed square obviously and that one wants to move along it's had enough time on camera <laughs> and um and this is the, the second one so i'm enjoying these they're just two and a half inch square um square blocks <clears throat> and as i said before this will hopefully become a quilt for the um, Siblings Together charity, which I spoke about on a, on a previous episode, if you're interested in finding out um, a little bit more about what that is. So that will be um, eventually, because there's no big rush on it, eventually made into a quilt to give to um, the children in care who are separated in care from their, their siblings. So it's really nice to have um, a simple project on the go. Um, I'm enjoying that. I haven't been doing a huge amount of quilting, but um, but I do love the blocks. And I do have more plans for quilting coming up. I think always every year um, I stitch a lot. I do a lot less quilting in the summertime, a lot less patchwork and quilting in the summer. I think we all do less because we're probably outside a little bit more or the kids are home from school or for whatever reason. But um, I do have more stitching plans. So I hope that there will be more to show you. I didn't get any of my uh, spelling bee blocks um, stitched up this last couple of weeks, um, which is, I was kind of sad about. Um, but I always, you know, I will get to them, and I'm, I've got my weekend, uh, my three or four days away with my friends, and um, so that might be something that I take whenever I go on that stitchy break with them, and I will take um, things to sew, and I will take. Um, a small gift for each of them. I mentioned it last time that I would have to have something planned and organised and this is as far as my plans and organisation have got which is the bundle of scraps from which I will make. <laughs> so these are, sorry for the glare but uh, I don't want to take all the scraps out. These are leftovers from a quilt that I made that has sort of 30s style inspired fabrics. Um, yeah, it's not yellow scraps, as you can see, but um, I am planning to do a patchwork something. I can't say because I know that they watch, so you probably won't be able um, to see it until I've been and gifted them. But I do have a plan. I did measurements. I have dimensions to work from. I just need to sit down and do it. But it's good to have the plan already in place and i'm looking forward to making those little gifts um for my stitching besties um so that's something i'm really looking forward to as well and the one last sewing machine quilting stitching that i'm going to do or hope to do in july is to finish my quilt from last year's jolly july that is, I'm going to show a picture of it, 
Okay, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold it up well enough for you to see. But this is the Jelly Snowflake Quilt. It was a free pattern that Fat Quarter Shop offered last year in July. The links are below because I had a look and it's still there on their blog. And I used some of the Macauer, I told you about the Macauer Scandi fabrics when I showed you that little project bag earlier. I used some of the Macauer Scandi fabrics uh, in that quilt along with Kona Snow um, as the background. So I'm going to try to show you. It was a mystery quilt along. So it was released in parts, I think over five or six weeks. Well, it was July, so maybe it was only released over however many weeks there were, Wednesdays in July or something. Um, I can't remember, but it's on the blog, you'll, you'll see, but it's all there. The patterns were great, the instructions were easy, and um, I really, really enjoyed making this quilt. I'm going to do my best to show you some of it. <laughs> um, I won't be able to get a, a good distance, I don't think, but I'll show you. Now this bit here, this bordering, um, where I have the two reds and the cream in the middle, Again, they're all the Scandi fabrics. That is something that I added to enlarge the pattern. So that is not part of the pattern if you want to go and have a look yourself. That's not part of the pattern. But it is, um, I mean, it wasn't hard to do. I just used the scrappy leftovers. So yeah, I'm not going to be able to show you this in any decent way, which is why I'm going to try and add the photographs in. But I'll try and lift it up a little bit so you can see, hopefully. over just to see if you're getting any kind of decent view, <laughs> decent view of this. So you can see that I have um, I have finished the piecing but it's still an unfinished quilt so it needs to be it needs to be basted and bound. I'm going to come up closer so that you can see some of those lovely Scandi fabrics. It's a nice hearts one more hearts. These other little hollies and stripes and angels and Christmas trees. And some snowflakes. More trees. So they're lovely range. They also have a, a grey range of the Scandi fabrics. Um, yeah, so they, they do the grey and the red and cream, and then they do like a grey and cream, which is really nice too. So if you are interested, you could have a look and see. I'm not sure how widely available Macau is, um, particularly for the US because it is a UK, but you might be able to find it. Um, Macau is M A K O W E R just in case you want to have a, a quick Google search. So, so my plan is to get that basted, quilted and bound. So it would be lovely if I could get that quilted in July. So that's it, really that's a wrap for today. Um, please go and check out the floss tubes that I mentioned earlier, Sarah and Sam and Jenny. Um, they will be worth your time. Uh, go and watch them. If you like them, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe. Give them a boost as well. Comment and let them know um, what it is you like about them. Because it's always, I know that I have really benefited from knowing what it is you like to see, what it is you want to know. So, you know, keep asking. If there's something you would like me to show you, if there's older works you'd like to see, um, because I don't always have lots of new things. So, Maybe you'd like to see some of my older quilts or some of my older stitching and we can uh, I can work that in from time to time. But uh, but it's useful. So go and let the other floss tubers know what it is you would like to see more of from them as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for being loyal viewers um, and engaging and having conversation with me. Um, I hope that I'll make it back in two weeks time. Um, I have plans afoot to um, maybe keep my little missy busy <laughs> over the holidays and um, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to find 
um, a, a few quiet hours to um, be able to work and plan a floss tube get it recorded and edited and, and up again for you so hopefully it won't be too long i'd like to be back before i go and visit my friends in england um, just to give you an update on what i have or or maybe haven't been able to do since then so next time i'm hoping to show you some photographs of my neighboring village which is called hillsborough i've taken a few photographs already of um, my morning walks there um, just to show you a little bit more of where I live but I, um, I'm, I need to still pull that together so I'm hoping to take a few more pictures um, and so that you can see a little bit more of, of where I am and, and what is here and it's a pretty place so um, I'm sure that you will enjoy seeing that um, so until the next time you know the drill stitch happy and stay well bye